Hey, it's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. We are here at Cleveland City Council Chambers, and we're here with Philip Yenyo. You are the vice chair of the committee for 500 years and also executive director of the American Indian Movement, Ohio chapter. Thank you for taking a few moments here to talk with us about this, this movement that is, is really gaining some traction here. What's going to be happening around opening day this year for our baseball team here locally? Well, on opening day, we are having a demonstration. It usually starts about two hours before the, the ball game starts. And, and we're going to be starting our march uh, at the corner of Detroit and West 25th marching over to the Detroit Superior Bridge, over to the ballpark, where we're going to demonstrate and tell people how we feel about the logo and the name of the baseball team. Right. So you've done this before. Uh, there's been demonstrations now for 20-some years, I think. What's different this time around? Is there, does it feel like there's something different between, besides the 100th anniversary of the team using this, this, this racist logo and name? Um, you know, with the things that are going on with the Washington football team, it does seem like there's uh, a renewed energy about this movement uh, and about negative stereotyping of people of all cultures, uh, especially those First Nations that were here before the settlers. Um, it, it's, it started out last fall with uh, Washington playing Minnesota, and there was a very, very large turnout there. And when we here in Cleveland saw that, um, you know, 5,000 people showed up there for that and we're hoping that we can get the same kind of of uh of support from from everyone around the country just like what happened in in minnesota what do you uh, what do you expect the team to do exactly specifically well i would hope that the dolans would sit down to talk to us um over the years They've never extended a hand. We've asked to sit down and talk to them, but um, they've never wanted to sit down and talk to us. I mean, it's, it's a matter of sitting down and discussing the issue and, and coming to a consensus. You know, we want to help them change. You know, we don't want a lawsuit. I, I don't know who this guy is that's trying to bring up this lawsuit, but, you know, it's not about money. It's never been about money. It's about a, a mutual cultural respect it's respect as other human beings and we just feel that we deserve the same respect as other people you know phil thank you so much for taking a few moments of talking with us good luck this week thank you very much thank you, Tom. we're here at cleveland city council we're here with councilman zach reed zach i understand you are gonna uh talk to your fellow council persons tonight uh and and you're gonna talk to them about uh the our doing baseball right team, right? Doing, doing, the, right doing the right thing. Talk about what you're going to bring up tonight and what you hope to achieve. Well, tonight I'm going to bring up once again that, you know, we live in a city of tolerance. We live in a city of diversity. And we live in a city now where one of our major league sports franchises continue to put forth a logo that clearly is disruptive and discriminatory and, in my opinion, bigotry towards the people in this city as a whole. So uh, given that, uh, it's been that way for, I think it's the 100th anniversary or so of that, um, the calls for it to change have been increasing and increasing. There's going to be even more this year. What do you hope specifically City Council can do about this? Are you talking about uh, passing legislation? I'm hoping we can do the same thing they did in Indiana and the same thing they did in Arkansas, that we can put so much pressure on the Cleveland Indians to make the right decision to get rid of that logo. When you look at the fact that it looks just like the black sambo. I mean, we can we can try to skate around it. We can try to make it look this way or that way. But if you put those two pictures up against each other, the only difference is you got a red face and you got a black face. We outlawed sambo years ago. The time has come, a hundred years later, to finally ban the wahoo. So what do you do? Is it is it economic? Uh, are there sanctions? Are there any uh, taxes? You can, I mean, what, what specifically do you think council, city council can do here representing the, the people of the city of Cleveland? I think we can put pressure. I mean, the Cleveland Indians, first of all, we own progressive field. So if there's anything that we can do as it relates to the lease that's going to be coming up, we need to put pressure on them through the lease. We own a lot in and around Gateway. We need to figure out whether or not we can continue to let them put up banners that have that display. We need to figure out from a city council standpoint what we can do as legislators to ensure that that logo that goes around our nation that goes around the world depicting what Cleveland looks like 
or there are representatives and then you look besides the Washington Redskins that logo is the number one hated logo for the Native Americans what are we sending to the message to our to the Native Americans that we in Cleveland embrace a symbol that they say is bigotry that they say is discriminatory that they say is racist that's not Cleveland we know what Cleveland is we know Cleveland's tolerance we know Cleveland is diverse let's get rid of the logo now what kind of support do you have on the rest of council for anything like this? Oh, I have a lot. I have a lot. A lot of my colleagues feel the same way I feel, and the mayor feels the same way also. Taking roll now, so I'll let you go. Thank you so much, Thank council. Thank you very much. It's Thomas Mulready from CoolCleveland.com. Have a great week in Cool Cleveland.